Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Good morning and welcome to Mount Olive Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are happy and blessed to be in the house of the Lord today. And for those who are who are viewing online, we thank you for tuning into our channel today and we look forward to what the Holy Spirit is going to do for you wherever you are and what he's going to do in this place. Wish you was here, but since you can't be with us, our prayers go out to you as well. And for those of us here today, um, do we have any first time visitors? We'd like to start our service off right. If this is your first time worshiping here at Mount Olive, just raise your hand. First time worshiping at Mount Olive. If there's anyone here, this is your first time worshiping with us. Just raise your hand. All right, all right. Well, what we can do then is we've had a good week. The yesterday was just picture perfect, wasn't it? Great time to be in Florida. Amen. I, the weather was just right. Everything seemed to be flowing right. You can let them in. Um, and it seems like the temperature was just right for us. I enjoyed yesterday. But today is a better day because it's God's holy Sabbath day. Amen. And so we're here to worship God today. I want you to do something for me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. neighbor. From, the from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, the, of the, same. the Lord is worthy to be praised. <laughs> now, if that's the wrong neighbor, turn to the other neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, from the rising of the sun, to the setting of the same. The Lord is worthy to be praised. We come to praise him in the sanctuary. We come to praise him for the things he has done. We praise him for the promises that he has made to us. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, let everything that have breath do what? Praise the Lord. So if you didn't come to praise God today, you're in the wrong place. You're in the wrong place because the Spirit of the Lord is here. Today is our community services day. Uh, we're going to get only three people. Now come on, work with me. Community services day. Amen. Why don't you put your hand together for our community service team. I don't know how many of you pass this place uh, every other week. Uh, and you see cars lined up all the way up to Keene Road, sometimes past Keene Road. We have an awesome team of volunteers that work here tirelessly. They work through all the heat. They work through the rain. They're like postmen. Rain, see the snow. Community service got to go. And so it works like that. And so we want to salute them today. And I also want to salute the church for the support that we give, that you give to the community service team. Because if it wasn't for the church, that wouldn't be community services. Amen. So I want to salute you for all that you do as well today. We're asking that all Pathfinder committee members meet with us today at 6 o'clock. All Pathfinder committee members, please meet with us at 6. We have to talk about, we're getting ready to go to Gillette, Wyoming. So we have to talk about that to see how we can work with that. Uh, we finished book one in our great controversy. And uh, I, you know, it, was a, it has been a great study thus far. We've had a lot of eye-opening things. This coming Wednesday night, we encourage you to come. I think you have the Zoom for the Zoom link for, um, for prayer meetings. Just throw it up. So those of you who don't have this Zoom or don't get it on our app, you can take your cell phones out. This time we give you permission to take out your cell phones and take a picture. And as soon as you do that, put them on silent and put them back in your, put, in, in, in your pockets or wherever. But um, this week we're going to do a, a, a study on how churches were formed and the names, where the names of different churches come from. So it's going to be an interesting, interesting study this coming week. So we invite you to join us. Uh, for our, our prayer meeting starting at 7.30 Wednesday evenings. Um, we continue to talk about our, ask you to work with us in terms of our reverence in the sanctuary. We are we're asking if you brought a water bottle in with you, take it out with you. 
Is that all right? Yes. Amen. And if you have a little one that runs track or wants to run track, this is not a track meet in here. We have a big parking lot outside. And they can run all around the church, get all that sugar out of them and all of that stuff. But inside the sanctuary, this is God's holy place. So we're asking you to work with us in terms of that, you know, and um, as we church train our children, you know, I, I don't know, see, I may be dating myself, but I remember when my mama church trained us, you know, and she gave us a look. Remember, remember that only a look, only a look. And that's all it took was just a look. And that look said a, a million different words that, you know, I, my, I'm, I hope my sister's not watching. But I had a sister and she didn't believe the look was real. I knew it was real because I'm older, but she didn't think it was real. But um, when she got home, she had, um, there was a sacrifice that had to be paid. She paid the sacrifice, but after that, the look was real. So we're asking you to help us in terms of maintaining the um, reverence in God's holy, holy sanctuary. I want you to look at this as I take my seat. Do this the last time. I, you know, we have to, worship is a verb, right? Which means it's an action word. We get things moving, get things going. I want you to look, do one thing else. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is able. God is able. Do we have his, well, ha, did you experience an able God this week? Sometimes you don't know how you make it, but you find out that through it all, God is able. You know, I, I, there's a song that says, God is able to do just what he promised he do. He will fulfill all of his promises to you because God is able. And so as we worship together today, let's remember that we serve an able God and all we have to do is go to him, trust him. And if you don't have all the faith, just mustard seed faith, God can do some amazing things for you. So we pray that you have a wonderful Sabbath experience today. I don't know about you, but I'm going to have a wonderful experience today. I'm claiming it before it happens. You know, you have to see it before you see it. You have to claim it before it's done. And so that's what we're doing. So may the Lord bless you real good. May you have a wonderful Sabbath experience, Madam Clerk. starts at 10 a.m. sharp, so please come out and join the discussion. Pathfinder meeting today at 4.30, 4.30 sharp, and next Sabbath is Pathfinder's Day. Pathfinder will also have a fundraiser concert on November 18th, so stay tuned for further information. Men's Ministry Vesper next Friday, October 27th at 7 p.m. Attention all men of Mount Olive, next Friday evening at 7 p.m. is our Vesper worship. All brothers are welcome. Power up, iron sharpen iron. Amen? Amen. And on November 4th at 6.30 p.m., we have Family Life Night Out of Love, Laughter and Learning. This program is for couples and relationships. All are welcome. They're providing childcare snacks. Registration is required. You can register online at mountolive.org, mountolivesda.org, excuse me, or fill out a registration form that's in the lobby at the table at the door. And on November 11th, we'll be celebrating Pastor Appreciation Day. Amen. And last but not least, the quote of the week. Believe Christ died, that was history. Believe Christ died for me, that's salvation. Amen. Amen. All right, have a blessed Sabbath and a wonderful week.
is we have a painting party getting ready to take place. And so all of painters, uh, uh, wanna, well, no, painters, <laughs> we want you to, we, we're going to give you the date. And along with that, we have a painting party slash fish fry. So, you know, we, we're going to have all that. So if you can't paint, you can clean up. So we look forward to that. But we like to do something here as our community service people come forward. Um, we like to greet each other. Just get up and the musicians are going to give us some handshaking music so you can move around. Some of you haven't seen each other this week. And that way we can um, greet each other and get the juices really flowing as we worship God today in spirit and in truth. A very happy Sabbath to each and every one of you. I'm so happy to see you all here this morning. And as you know, it's our special day today. See our flag? <laughs> I would just tell special thanks to the tech team and to um, Brother Levard for making the the flag for us. I really love it. It attracts me. <laughs> anyway, my husband and I are here, as you can see, and um, most of our friends are here. We are here today to, to let you know a little bit of what we do. You all know, but I wanted to show off most of our um, our volunteers and um, as soon as I sit down after my husband speaks 
Our dear pastor is going to give a, a dedica dedicatory prayer for us because we need it. We're asking you all to pray for us. It's a very, very hard department that we have to run. It takes manual labor, mental labor, and a lot of prayer. We appreciate the calls that we get, the encouragement that I receive, because many times I'm crying at my bedside. Because <laughs> I don't know where to go, what to do. But thank God for people like you and for my immediate family. I got some encouraging calls this morning. Like somebody, they were reading my mind. And my sister asked me, do you have a cold? I said, no. And I guess she realized what it is, what was happening. And she said, okay, I'm praying for you. I have to also thank my immediate family. Most of you know them, but Claudine and Jennifer, Claudine works behind the scenes. She does a lot. And all those posts that you see on, um, on Facebook, so forth and so on, she does that. Many times she calls, Mommy, are you going to advertise today having the food? <laughs> yes, Jen, Claudine, I forgot. And by the time I look, it's there. So my two sons who reside in Georgia, they are a part of this too. They pray for us and they give us all the encouragement. Because many times people would say, Sister Gray, why don't you give it up? <laughs> why you do, how come you do this so long and how do you do it? I say, it's not me, it's Christ that lives in me and allows me to do this. There are some people who are here, I will not call names. You know who you are. It's so, we have gotten so close over the time and their encouragement keeps me going. And this gentleman, you see here with his hand over here on my shoulder, <laughs> he's the center of it all. Let me tell you something. I can't, I couldn't do it without him. And um, please don't blame me for this, but this is the best man that God put on the face of the earth. <laughs> He's so good to me. And he does everything right. You know, we don't quarrel, we don't fight. We might have misunderstandings, but I keep quiet. <laughs> and it just comes threefold, all around. A lot of love, a lot of love. So thank you all. And I have to say thanks to my pastor, who allows me and allows community service to go where they go. <laughs> You see this gentleman over here, this pastor, he and I don't fuss, you know. We don't quarrel, we don't fight. Pastor, thank you. And um, whenever I come up with new ideas, he would say, yeah, sure, go ahead. And um, normally on a day like this, coming to service today, this place, we don't have room. And as you know, we have a lot of competition in and around the area. The Sabbath, this special Sabbath, but we're just going to go on. We don't let it stop us because this is God's day and this is coming to service today. Um, there are a few little changes and my husband is going to go forth now because we, you might say, okay, the, the, the coming to service, the, the fellowship hall is off. We're not going to have lunch. We're going to have lunch because we made it. Through Pastor Dara again, we made it possible. So he's going up. My husband will take over you now from here. I just want you to know I'm not taking over. She's the boss. <laughs> I just want to say thank you to everyone. Uh, visible right now, 
in front of me, uh, the volunteers that have come out, Pastor have already said it well, without exclusive of this church and the committed and dedicated people. We have been in this uh, community service position probably too long. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, we have been involved in other churches doing the same work, family life, uh, other departments. And I have not, I have never seen, and I will say it today, I have never seen a committed, dedicated team as this team. And I would like you all to just stand up. Some of us, some of them are not here. I have never seen a dedicated and committed set of people working, and I'm telling the truth, in a department such as this. During COVID, you may be seated. During COVID, I was just looking at a, a clip from West 2 uh, Channel, and they were talking, they had a, a, a um, a, a team out here and they were speaking about the the the, the church and they, they mentioned the lines and as pastor said and how they're doing it we were masked up and during that time nobody contracted COVID Man. and that that's a blessing dealing with the folks and so we just want to thank the team in a very special way and those that are silent uh, Behind the scenes, you know who you are, that have been dedicated and committed to this, this uh, program. And it's not to us or to the department, but it's God's work. That's what he said. He said, feed the people. He didn't look for numbers, you know, who was coming to the church and who came to the temple. Feed the people. And through that, we have made several uh, um, uh, um, bonds with some of those people there. Some of you don't know, we have, we have been to their churches, we have visited their homes, we have um, officiated funerals for them, we have brought baby items to their homes, furniture, over the years, and we have bonded with them. Some of them became Christians because of the community service here at this church. They didn't come to this church, but they went to other churches. I'm just letting you know that God is working and never give up. That's the cliche. And my mantra is, if, you, if I can help somebody along the way, then my living is not in vain. Because that's the way, that's the way it should be. So we want to thank you. We want to thank again Pastor Ware. And uh, of course, his family and everyone that has a part to do with this. We want to give acknowledgement to some of those that are not here. The Rampersards, they had to go away on a, a funeral. Jeff Williamson, um, he had something to do uh, for this weekend. He's flying out now. And a few others um, that are not he here today. And uh, forgive me if I've, I've overlooked some names. And we just want to thank, we just, we don't know what else to do. When you see those boxes there, it, it's so many, many things, so, so many intricate things that has to be done to bring that food here. Someone said to me, oh, we thought you get the food free, you just go pick it up and bring it. That's not how it works. It's, it's government controlled. My wife is, is up at night sometimes. 1 in the morning, 12.30 in the morning, trying to, on the computer, trying to fix things and work things. And thank God for the, the Second Harvest Food Bank as Amen. well. Amen. Because we have a, a strong rapport with them. And they have been good to us as well as we have been good to them. Amen. And so we thank you. And so continue to pray for us. Encouragement goes a long way. If I'm digging a hole and my wife said, oh honey, that hole looks good, I'll dig two or three more just by the encouragement. So God bless you and we thank you very much for your support on this day. You can talk about the lunch. Um, as was said before, lunch will be served after the service. Um, so don't try to go out there before the service is over. <laughs> but my wife came up with the idea. She uh, conversed with Pastor Ware, and we were given the okay to do that. So lunch will be served. What is food, with, uh, community service without food? <laughs> That's right. God bless you, and uh, I think... I am sorry, but I have to interject right here. I just want, I know my friend Peggy is watching, and I know I have to say thank you for what you did. And even when you were leaving, 
you change the flowers, the flower arrangements. Thank you. You are such a sweet person. Thank you very much, an elder Rampasad. Okay. if they will come as well and circle around behind them. Come on, we have more room up front. Come on, everybody can fit up here. Pretend you're out there under those tents. How you all smash together to make it happen. Come on, just step right in, step right in. We're gonna ask our elders if they will come and join us. And we're gonna ask those pastors, Pastor Richardson, um, Pastor Campbell, if they will come down front as well. Other pastors. Dr. Green, can you, can you come up here and join us too, please? Ella Brown, will you come down front too? All elders, come on. Stand behind them. Join with us here. Okay, you all can come a little closer. We don't have COVID. Come on, come on, come on. Fill in. All right. Amen. Amen. Can you put your hands together for our, our team? I tell you, they do an awesome, awesome job out there working. I worked about two days with them. I had to go on some appointments. You know, it was not that I didn't want to come back. I just had these assignments. You know what I'm saying? I had those assignments I had to do. But I want to take our hats off to Sister Gray. Oh man, she is she's awesome. You can put your hands together for her and Elder Gray. Wow. Amen. And the work that they they do. Let us join hands as far as possible. And we're gonna pray. All right. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for giving us another day. You woke us up this morning, put movement in our limbs and breath and our lungs. We count that a joy and a miracle from the beginning because there are many who went to sleep last night who didn't wake up today. We ask, we thank you for looking upon us and giving and granting to us favor for such a time as this. As we stand here in your presence, God, we know what prayer can do. We have seen you work, and we pray today that you will look upon each and every one of our community service team members with grace, mercy, and favor, and give them the strength that they need to continue to carry on. We recognize we live in a world that's upside down, and it's hard sometimes. But the good news is that when you have Jesus with you, Jesus takes all of the hits and you are able to move forward in his name and he gives you the power to not just be a conqueror to be, but to be more than a conqueror not just to be an overcomer but to be greater than an overcomer and so we thank you for them we ask that you would strengthen them keep them we, we love the attitude of sacrifice that they have given and how they make it look so easy, even though it's a hard task. There are thousands of people who have been blessed by their sacrifice. We have seen many, many cars come and many families come in. We've heard their testimonies that in a time when food is, there's a shortage, they can come here and get something to carry them through the week to bless their families and for that lord we give you thanks for making us a vessel a vehicle whereby we can go and serve those who may not be able to help themselves right now so god continue to shower this team with all of the things necessary for them to be successful in the mission that you have set them on helping to understand that they are an army an army for Jesus Christ. 
an army that's going forth, that's spreading a gospel. It may not be a preach word, but it's a word anyway that let people know that we care. Because people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So Father, thank you for giving us this opportunity to work with them. And we thank you for each and every one of them. Now individually, we ask that you would strengthen them and keep them. Be with our leader in a very special way. Help her, Lord. Keep her strong. Keep her faithful. Be with those who are close to her as well. Her family, her husband, in a very real way. And when you crack the skies, and we know that event is soon to happen, signs are foretelling that your coming is imminent. When you crack the skies, may you be able to reach down and say to them, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in a few things. I will now make you a rewarder of much. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And until then, keep us, bless us, strengthen us, contain, keep us always focused on the mission. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Can the church put your hands together for our community service team, our volunteers here today. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen, amen. Praise God. Good morning, Mount Olive. Okay, nudge somebody and say, you just got to church, wake up. Come on, nudge somebody. You just got to church, wake up. Good morning, Mount Olive. Good morning. Remind me, I remind you, this is not the church of the cemetery. We serve a live and living God, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. This morning, we want to welcome all of our volunteers. I got a chance to meet Andrew. That's the only name I remember because it's my son's name. But anyway, we're happy to have you guys here. And we want to dedicate this song to you guys, all right? Onward, it's in the tune of Onward Christian Soldiers, but the words will be on the screen. And it's going to be called Onward Community Services Move in Fear with God. Is that all right? Now, we're not going to do it real fast. We're going to take our time because we want to make sure this is really good for our volunteers and for Jesus Christ. So stand with me, everyone, as we sing this song. Last week, we were off the chart as far as the decibels are, is concerned. We want to go higher in the Lord, all right? They say at some decibels, it'll hurt your ears, but this is not going to hurt your ears. Let's sing as loud as we can sing to praises to our God as we sing this song. We can do it. Amen. Onward Community Services. All right. Let's say these words now. Come on. Onward Community Services. You sound so good.
job. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church. Today's scripture will be taken from Psalms 46, and I will read in your hearing. When you're ready, just let me know, and I'll proceed. Amen? Amen. 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 Yes. God is our refuge and strength, a very pleasant help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen rage, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. I'm going to say that again. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he had made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen, and I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us, and the God of Jacob is our refuge. God's blessing on our, the hearing and the reading of the word today. Someone said to me this morning, Elder Gray, are you all right? And that person, I told that person that they have a discerning spirit. I'm all right. I'm blessed. But there were some things on my mind that obviously showed on my face. And I said to the person, I don't want to give off any negativity to anybody. So how am I looking now? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, as I um, ponder this week, as I do when I'm asked to uh, do something in the church for the Lord, I ask the Holy Spirit, what should I pray for? And who am I to stand as a person in the gap, as an intercessor for your people? And he gave me the Holy Spirit gave me, it reminded me of, of when the children of Israel, like we sometimes do, uh, uh, became, the word was intractable, hard to deal with. In the medical sense, it means that's a hard disease or problem to take care of. And you remember what God said, the infinite God said about his own children. In my words, I wish I never made them. 
That's what he said. Many of you have children. Have you ever said that about your children? Maybe you have. But it's something to ponder. But Moses stood in the gap for his people, for his family. And he beseeched God. Simply said, give them another chance. How can you do this? And God recanted from his thoughts and blessed his people. And so as I stand here today to offer intercession for, for the family of God, I want to remind you also when the temple was built, Solomon finished the temple. The Ark of the Covenant was set. Everything was ready to enter into the new temple. And as he knelt down, it's found in Psalms 139, familiar scripture to most of us, if not all of us, search me, O God, and know my heart. Yeah. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. You also remember the story when someone beseeched the Lord and the angel was dispatched immediately. And what happened midway? Satan stopped that angel. And it was a fight, a war going on, as it still is. And later on it said, your, your request was already answered. And then Michael stepped in, as he's doing for us now, interceding for us. So as our illustrious praise team brings us into a form of a spirit of atmosphere of prayer we would like you to uh, resume a position of prayer as we beseech the Lord in prayer you would like to come down at this time if you feel like you need to or would want to you may come down to the front art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come yeah. father we all dressed up looking handsome and looking pretty this morning on your holy sabbath day and we thank you and give you all of the adoration and glory that you so deserve despite the news and the wars and rumors of wars and all of deflections and distractions of life that's going on as we even now worship you today on your holy sabbath day and this is the day that the lord have made yes. and we want to rejoice in it we thank you for your love we thank you for your protection and Father, this is the 42nd Sabbath of this year, 2023. And even right now, they say that every 14 minutes there's an accident. 
There's 9,000 plus accidents in this state alone. Every so often, and people are dying. Even right now, and we are privileged to be here today to worship you. Help us not to take this time for granted. Because in an instant, things can change for the best or for the good. So keep us there, Father, because we cannot keep ourselves. And today as we worship, we ask you to search our hearts. There's some little sins. I know I have them. I'm the first to say that sometimes we cherish and we have been addicted to them. And we sometimes don't even realize that we are performing that sin or thinking about that sin. And so we ask you, Father, so that your blessings will come down copiously upon us today. That you will cleanse us of all unrighteousness and every sin that so easily easily we are supposed to be strong in the Lord so easily beset us each step of the way we ask you to cleanse us and father we know that you are not a dictator as Satan has so said and we are not robots dear father we are children of the king and we need to remember that that when everybody else is bound down to everything that is being displayed on this earth and in this earth in this country in this state that we are still standing tall as men and women you have given us the command and we are to believe so that you can work and you can unleash the blessings so father keep us today bless us in a very special way we know that the devil has the power nothing has been taken away from him when he was cast out and he still has the power to do what he wants to do but for Jesus Christ he can go but so far so help us to remember that father as we go through our lives we, we remember uh, all of those examples that you have given us in the Bible you have given us everything so we may succeed so help us to search the scriptures also father so we will have what we need to retain in our minds so that when the devil and the enemy the murderer comes up against us we will be able to say thus said the Lord get thee behind me Satan we know he's working the fire has been turned up seven times plus because we see it father he's working in the homes he's trying to break up the homes like he had broken up the, the even in heaven he broke up the family of God he took one third of the angels with him he's a liar and a murderer and a deceitful being and I say this father in your name in the name of Jesus when we call the name of Jesus the demons including Satan shudders to help us to remember who we belong to thank you father for providing for us during this week you're our provider our protector and our and you produce fruits in us so we thank you father we are so happy now and joyful in our hearts that we belong to the king of kings yes. and lord of lords yes. we pray for those that are having difficulty within the family father we know that prayer changes things we ask you to work on the hearts of those that are stony hearts and give them the hearts of flesh so that you can come in and dissect reset and reprogram the heart so that we may move forward and upward on this in this world for the kingdom to come and finally the earth made you so we thank you father we thank you for everything that you have done for us help us to open our eyes and our hearts to you today and we thank you that we are in this place even though other things are going on, on around us at other churches at this time but you led us to this place and this is where the blessing will be received today we thank you for the pastor of this church it's not easy to deal with your people and the situations 
And so we ask you to continue to shower down on him the oil that is needed so that he will be able to conduct and direct your people. Be with his wife and his family. And we pray for all of the uh, leaders of this church. We pray for those that are attending today that have maybe not given their hearts to you even within the fold father that have not completely turned over their hearts to you we pray for you for them today that your holy spirit before even the spoken word and the appeal is made by your manservant that your holy spirit will appeal to them even right now and they will stand for you and give their heart to you and be saved in your kingdom we thank you for everything father we thank you for the young people be with them as they are matriculating through life and they're trying to find out who they are and what they want to do and the goals that they need to set we pray for them also we pray for the little children and we thank you for allowing past uh, dr uh, leecroft green and his wife to land safely here today may we we be blessed and help us not to forget what community service is it's not departmental it's the whole church it's your people you do something for somebody yeah. without any intentions of receiving gains or rewards because we know as christians our reward is in heaven thank you father for everything that you have done in jesus name we pray and for his sake
Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. It's good to see you guys this morning. I hope you had a good week at school. I know I did. Yeah. Let me ask you a question, boys and girls. How many of you like to help? Would you say you like to help? Yeah. I would raise my hand too. I like to help. I like to do things that help other people. So what are some things that you do to help? My daddy help my help my auntie clean. Very nice. She helps her auntie clean. What do you do to help? Help my daddy to do the dishes. Oh, very nice. Sweep the floors. Sweep the floors. All right. For offering, oh, offering help. people. Oh, he helps pick up offering. Very nice, Jackson. Sharing. That's excellent. Sharing is a big help. I help my church play drums. Nice. He helps the church play drums. He leads in worship. That's awesome. You know, today is Community Services Day, and one of the things, one of the uh, primary core tenets or the core um, beliefs about community service is that we are helpers, right? We go out and we help. If you heard Brother Gray say, we give without the expectation of getting anything back. And that's true helping. When you help someone and you do something nice for somebody else and you don't think about what they are going to do for you. So I'm going to read you a little story today about a special helper. So it starts, David sat on the floor beside daddy's chair. I have something important to talk about with you, daddy said. Well, what is it, David said. Well, tomorrow, mommy is coming home from the hospital and she'll be bringing your brother Donovan oh, with her. She'll need your help. Help? I don't know how to take care of a baby. How am I going to help? Well, daddy smiled. Well, you can help by keeping your room clean. How many of you said keeping your room clean? I think, I think, yeah, you did. You can help by bringing mommy things. How many of you bring your mom or your dad things when they need it? Yep. I have, yeah, you do. Yeah. You can help by just being quiet and letting the baby sleep. David said, oh, mommy will need a lot of things. I can help. David thought for a while. Will you love me when the baby comes to live with us? Of course, daddy said with a smile. A few years ago, mommy and I asked God to give us a baby to love, and he gave us you. We love you so much. Then we asked God to give us another baby, and he gave us Donovan, baby Donovan, and we will all love him too. The next day when mommy and baby Donovan came home, daddy took David by the hand and led him to the living room. David, meet your baby brother, he said. Well, David looked at the baby in mommy's arms and said, goodness, he's so tiny. He can't do anything at all. Daddy said, no, he can't, but he will grow and he will learn. David kissed mommy and looked down at the new baby. I love you, baby Donovan, David said. I will teach you how to do things, and I will be your special, special helper. Mommy, I will help you take care of baby Donovan. Now, this is a very simple story about a new baby, but we all know that when we help, we are doing kind things. Thank you. And we are being the hands and feet of Christ. What that means is we are helping, and we are helping the way Jesus would have helped. There is a... <laughs> thank you. See, they're helping. They're helping. Thank you, guys. There is a Bible text that I want to read you, and it comes from 3 John, verse 5. Oops. And it says, Dear friend, when you extend hospitality to Christian brothers and sisters, even when they are strangers, you make the faith visible. But we can learn just for your age that the Bible says, it is good that you help. Can you say that with me? It is good. Repeat after me. It is good, it is good. that you help. Okay, and we can sing a little song about that, too. Do you know the song, Mary Had a Little Lamb? Yeah. Yeah, you do. Okay, well, we're going to sing our memory verse, our song, It Is Good That You Help, from 3 John, verse 5, in the tune of Mary Had a Little Lamb. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Go ahead. 
It is good that you help, that you help, that you help. It is good that you, third John, third John, five, one more time. It is good that you help, that you help, that you help. It is good that you help, third John, five. Very good, boys and girls. And I hope you go through this whole week remembering to help as much as you can, all right? Help as much as you can. Can I get two friends to pray for us today? Can I get one and two? Oh, you pray all the time at home. Uh, all right, we're going to start. All right, we'll start with you, little one. Here we go. Thank you, Jesus. Let's say, let's say, amen. Amen. All right, Sarah. Dear Jesus, thank you for today. Help, help us to help our friends. Help us. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Father, thank you for this day. Bless all of us to have a wonderful Sabbath. And bless God, we have a helping hand. And bless all of us to have a wonderful day. Bless we have a wonderful time in school. Bless us, my, blit- my big sister, Belinda, is having a birthday at October 29th. And if anybody having a birthday in October, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you. Have a happy Sabbath, boys and girls. Let's go back to our seats. All right. Thank you for helping. about our offering because we say a lot about tithes and yes it's important we have to turn our tithes in because our conference need to function what do you say but we need our offering here I sat in two meetings last week and when I heard what need to be done around the church on what's broken on what we repair in this church and look at how much how much it costs I said we ought to do a little bit better than that I used to be a part of a church where I get a chance to open those envelopes. And when I look at the title envelope and I look and I see, sometimes I see six, seven hundred dollars, I'm gonna say it right out, for tithes, and then you put ten dollars for offering. I'm not saying it happened here, but we need to ch- we need to change <laughs> we need to change all of that. The way we give. There's, there's a line on there that says combined budget. That's the only thing. The pastor's not going to say this here. That's the only thing that's going to stay at the church. The tithes go to the conference. We can't touch that. So we're asking you to be a little bit more faithful in your offering. What do you say? Amen. All right, please. I'm going to ask you. Just put a little something there. A little bit better than a little bit. Put something on there. You know, because um, we have to take care of our church. And when this church was built back then, it's not going to last forever. Things are going to break. We need new carpet. We've got to get the carpet done as well. So therefore, we need to give to our church. And God has blessed us. He says we ought to come to his church and do what? Bring an offering. Yeah. And come into my courts and praise me. Bring an offering. And we ought to give our offering in love. Amen. With a smile on our face. And for those that are giving online, we, from the bottom of our hearts, I can tell you, we thank you for what you do. And we ask you to continue to give. 
So the work can go on here in this part of the vineyard. I'm going to ask them to come now so we can pray. Amen. Our Father in heaven, our God, we thank you so much for so many, many blessings. We come now, Lord, I ask you that you will accept our little offering today. There's nothing we can give, oh Father in heaven, that, 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 that can help you. Because, Father, you want to check and see how faithful we are to you in our giving. So, Father, bless our offering today. Continue to open the doors for us, Father, that the more we make, the more we give. Give us strength, Lord, and we pray that you'll stretch these funds to finish your work here. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Good morning, happy Sabbath church family. How many of you have the joy of the Lord on this morning? You guys got a little comfortable. Mama, wake you back up. How many of y'all have the joy of the Lord this morning? I want to tell y'all something, right? All my life, I've known two people. And this morning, I found out they know you too. Y'all want to know who it is? Shirley and Goodness. Pick that up. Shirley and Goodness shall follow you all the days of your life, right? Do y'all know Shirley and Goodness? I know them. So we have a lot to be thankful for because God steps in for us time and time again. And I'm here to share with you all this morning just to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Let me hear you say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. All right, let's get a praise going on. 
Amen. Amen. It's like we have some thankful people in the house today. Uh, we praise God from whom all blessings flow. And we thank him for his many wonderful blessings. We can't even count them all. Mm. God is good. Now I've heard people saying that there's, a, there's something going on in another church. I'm not concerned about that church. This is where the Holy Ghost is. I've come to Mount Olive, the greater Mount Olive, Seventh-day Adventist Church, to worship his holy name. If God wanted me somewhere else, he would have took me there. Do I have a witness in the house? He didn't take me there. He brought me here. And since I'm here, I'm going to praise him. Do I have a witness? And I wish I had somebody who could, who could testify. That since he brought me here, this is where I should be. So I'm going to give God the praise because I know the power of the Holy Ghost is here. I'm so, I'm so happy to be able to uh, introduce my friend to some of you. Some of you know him already, been knowing him for years. But he's with us again today, he and his lovely wife, um, Dr. Green. Just to give you a little background on who he is, for those who don't know Dr. Green, he's a native of Jamaica, New York. <laughs> no, it's Jamaica, West Indies. Some of you know that. He's a graduate of Atlantic Union College. He went to the wrong school, should have gone to Oakwood. <clears throat> Andrews Theological Seminary, Yale University School of Medicine, Mount Sinai Hospital Medical Center, the Lori Head and Neck Cancer Center, the University of Buffalo in New York. He's currently the chairman of the ENT and head of neck and neck, head and neck surgery. He's the the head of, the chairman of ENT Head and Neck Surgery at St. Barnabas Hospital in the Bronx, New York. He is married to Dr. Sharon Davis Green. Dr. Green, to Sharon, stand up. That's my, another one of my friends right there. Amen, amen. She brought him here today, dressed him, and he's here. He is married. Uh, he, he has, well, he has three adult children. Doesn't look like it, but he does. Man, does time fly. I tell you, it really flies. But we are blessed to have him in the house of the Lord today to come to Mount Olive to bring a word for such a time as this. If we ever needed to hear from the Lord with what's going on in, with the Republicans, what's going on in Israel, Egypt, Gaza, Palestine, I tell you, we really need the Lord to do something for us today. So I want you to pray that God will minister to you personally because we serve a personal God and he will speak to us personally as Dr. Green bring the message from him. Ask God to speak to you that you may leave here feel blessed, empowered to continue to fight the good fight of faith. After our praise team will have rendered the hymn of meditation, the next voice you'll hear will be that of Dr. Lee Croft Green. Hear ye him. Amen. We're going to sing a hallelujah praise real quick and get out your way. I'm not going to prod and poke you on this morning. How many hallelujah praises do I have in here? Thanking him for everything he's done for us. When we say hallelujah, that's something that we give to our king, our father. It literally belongs to him. Y'all agree? Are y'all going to say hallelujah with us this morning? I know I'm so grateful. I, I sing thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me, for your love, your power, your protection. This is the week. Ten years ago today, I should have been dead. This is my, I, I call it my, my new birth date. God took me from my bled of affliction and raised me up. When the doctors and the nurses were looking at me and saying, I don't know what to do. I called on the name of Jesus and I knew he would fix it. And after all I had was a hallelujah. What you see up here today is a hallelujah. Who you have sitting next to you today, they're a hallelujah. We need some hallelujah praisers up in here. For all the things he's done for us. And the many ways he's made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sandra, give us your testimony. My hallelujah 
place. sound engineer keep the mic hot I'm gonna ask you to stand now as we look at our sermonic text and can you bring my water for me Thank you. 
feel the spirit in the place. I invite you to take your Bibles and or electronic device and scroll to the book of Genesis. You don't have to go very far, just go to the book of Genesis, the third chapter. If you can't find Genesis, you're in trouble. <laughs> Genesis, the third chapter. And I've got just one verse, and that's verse number 15, Jesus. And the Bible declares, the Bible declares, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shall bruise his heel. For the next few moments that are mine, I want you to consider God's word today under the summary caption, hold on to the promises. Look at somebody and just say, hold on to the promises. Hold on to the promises. Because the reality is, that's all you got. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, the, the reality is that's that's all you got don't let go of what you got hold on to the promises father God in this place now at this time we pray that you will make your word plain and clear for we need a word from the Lord today in Jesus name Amen. Please be seated in the presence of, of our Lord. I want to take time, first of all, to thank your senior pastor, Dr. Carl Ware, for this opportunity to declare God's word in this place, a place, a pulpit from which many great sermons have been proclaimed. I want to thank Sister Gray and the community service team for thinking about having me here once again. I was talking to the pastor and asked him when was the first time I came down here and he reminded me that it was in the year 2015. And I've been coming here now every year for a little bit except for the time of COVID. And and God must be doing something through me, in me, for you to keep bringing me back. And, and, I, and I praise God for what he continues to do. And we pray that today will, will be no different. I've been around for a minute, and even though it may not seem that way, I've been around for a minute. And I've come to understand the real purpose of true biblical preaching. And it doesn't matter what, what platform you have, whether you're on TV or uh, you have some great title. True biblical preaching, hear me, and, and this is how you must evaluate everyone who stands in the pulpit or you listen on YouTube or wherever. You must evaluate them based on these two things. One, the purpose of biblical preaching is to reveal who God is. And the second purpose of true biblical preaching is to create change. So biblical preaching, biblical preaching is to reveal who God is and to create change. Change in the person, change in the church, and change in the society. Help me. Uh, in other words, in other words, true biblical preaching transforms reforms and agitates I, I kind of like that true biblical preaching reveals who God is and creates a change in the person transforms it it causes a change in the church to reform and it agitates the status quo in society yeah. 
But the reality is that the distinction between the revelation of God and change is artificial. My God. The, 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 that, that distinction between revealing who God is and change is artificial because the revelation of God always results in creative change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He, he doesn't have to do anything. He, he just has to show up. And, and when God shows up, things automatically change. Uh, the Bible says that he showed up in a place where there was nothing but amorphous gases and he shows up and the gases are solidified and a world is brought into being. He just has to show up. Uh, uh, the Bible says that, that he shows up in a fiery furnace and the caloric formal energy changes in the fiery furnace. God just has to show up. The, the Bible says that, that there were some lions and he showed up and their carnivorous nature was changed into vegetarians and 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 uh, God just has to show up there was a man named Lazarus that was dead and God just showed up and he came to life uh, is there anybody here who's glad to know that all God's got to do in your situation is to just needs to show up got some enemies on the job say show up uh, got a boss that is getting on your nerves just show up you got some sickness in your body just got trouble with your hard-headed kids just got some marital problems just mm. I want you to say with me, show up. show up, show yourself mighty, show yourself strong, show yourself great, show up. Amen. And, when, and when God shows up, it's already better. <laughs> uh, are you hearing me? When, when God shows up, it's already better. The revelation of God then is specific to the situation. All right. The revelation of God showing up must be to what I need him to show up for. Because it doesn't make sense for God to show up as Jehovah Jireh, the provider, when I have sickness in my body and I need Jehovah Rapha, the healer. Are you hearing me? <clears throat> so, so the revelation of God in your situation is specific to that situation. Because it don't make sense for God to come some other way than I need him. Because then the revelation is irrelevant. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And not only that, the revelation of God when he shows up is personal. So, I wish I had a church who, who understood. You see, when God shows up, the revelation of God is personal. Here, here's a paradox. Here's the paradox of worship. The paradox of worship is that here we all are gathered together, raising hands and singing. And even though it's corporate, it's, it's personal. Uh, we, we shout and we say amen, but even though everybody, it's personal. That's the paradox of worship. It's also the paradox of preaching. Come, come, come. Because while I'm preaching to everybody out here, I'm really preaching to you. I'm preaching to the many. But my sermon is for the one. Yes. That's right. That's right. Yes. And if the sermon doesn't touch the one, yes. it doesn't matter how the many react. Yes. Jesus. And that's the reason why. That's the reason why. That you can see some individuals in worship and their response is different. Yes. Well, this is going to get good. Their, their response is different. Because it's personal. So the revelation of God is specific to your need. It's personal. 
And God uses, hear me, God uses your situation. God uses your trials. God uses your challenges to release his creativity. Oh my God. <laughs> God, God, God uses your situation as an opportunity to reveal more of his nature. Mm -mm. So whenever you're going through something, whenever you're experiencing a hard time, just hold on. God's going to show up and show you who he is. He's going to come when you're going through some difficulty with your personal life. He's going to show up and show you who he is. When you feel abandoned and alone and betrayed, he's going to show up and show you his true nature. That he's a friend that's, ooh, Jesus, that sticketh closer than a brother. When you've lost, when you've lost a loved one and, 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 and you're mourning, he's going to show up and reveal the caring side. Your situation is an opportunity for God to show you a little bit more about who he really is. Outside of what Bible says. No, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. When, when God is showing up. He's showing up to show you who he is outside of Bible. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He's showing up to show you his personal self. Not his theor theoretical and theological self. You're not hearing me. He's not showing up to show you his doctrinal self. Mm. Can I break it down a little bit? I feel like preaching here. Um, um, so, so let's look at our sermonic text. This is, and, and I got to apologize to the community service and Sister Gray because because I kept I sat down and 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 I had a great community service sermon. You don't understand. I I had a good sermon. No, no. I had a good sermon. So, so here's the sermon that I was working on for the, what well, it'll be for the next time. So, so here, here it is, right? So here it is. You know the story of the, of, of the Jesus coming to the wedding feast and, and changing the water into wine. So my mind says, whoa, this is a good one. So I started working on that. And I started working on that and recognized Pastor Ware that it didn't matter what miracle Jesus had performed. He turned the water into wine. It would have been no good unless there were servants. Oh, oh, you like that? I, I tell you, if there were no servants to pour the wine that he had turned, it would have been no good. It didn't matter what miracle he performed if there's not somebody to pour. So, 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 so that was going to be my sermon. And doesn't it sound kind of good? Just pour. Don't worry about what's in the vessel. Just But God said, every time I sat down and, and all I could get was to just pour, I couldn't get any further. And God said, oh, no, I want you to talk about something else. So, 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 so here I am, hold on to the promises. Our scripture, Genesis 3.15, it's very interesting because right here we are in chapter 3. We haven't gotten very far. You're not hearing me. We, we haven't gotten very far in human history. We're only at chapter 3. Chapter 1, God had just made the world and everything in it was in harmonious existential relationship. Everything was perfect. When God said, this is critical, when, when God said it was good on day five, it was only good on day five because it was good in relationship to day four. Because if it wasn't good in relationship to day four, then it would have been bad. <laughs> when God says it's good, it's always in relationship to what preceded it. So in chapter 1, everything is in existential, harmonious relationship. 
chapter 2 comes along and, and God makes man and woman and he not only creates them but he explains to them their purpose because God didn't just bring you into the world to be God doesn't bring you just to exist God brings you for a purpose are you hearing me and the issue of life is really finding out what that purpose is why am I here uh, God explains to them why you're here you're here to have dominion to be the head and not the tail above and uh, I'm preaching this thing God made you to be a conqueror so that chapter 2 then 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 chapter 3 comes along and a situation develops sin enters into the world and disrupts the harmonious existential relationship between man and man and man and God and man and nature and and this disharmony is still all right can, can I can I show you something I wish you guys would would read so so Satan comes in to the garden see he comes into the garden he tempts Eve Eve partakes of the fruit she's separated for a moment from her husband Adam Satan is hoping pastor Ware, that once Adam came along and saw that Eve had sinned and taken of the fruit he was thinking and hoping that Adam would say well you do and walk away but Satan didn't count on the power of love are you hearing me I, I wish I had somebody who understood because Adam said I would rather be with her than alone Adam recognized that what Satan was trying to do was to disrupt the harmonious relationship between him and his uh-huh all right come come so he comes again now that didn't work it, it didn't work because because Adam decides to stay with Eve he comes now and he's thinking well surely surely man has sinned and God hates sin God is gonna do to man just what he did to me and push me out and put he was hoping that God would not show up you know he had tried it with Adam and Eve and it didn't work and so he's hoping that God is not gonna show up and do you see do you see but God shows up their sin did not cause God to not show up you're not hearing me you're not getting it there is no sin look how great that is that sin that turned the world upside down that sin that changed the very course of nature was not enough to cause God not to show up I came by to tell somebody I don't care what you've done I don't care where you've been there is nothing that you can do that God won't show up Are you hearing me? If they committed such a grievous sin and God still showed up, your little foolishness. Are you hearing me? Can I, can I throw this out there? You see, in a real sense, in a real sense, our verse of scripture, Genesis 3.15, is the Old Testament version of John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. That's the... Uh, Genesis 3.15 is, is the Old Testament version of John 3.16. Because here you have a perfect God loving an imperfect world, Jesus. Uh, here you have a holy God uh, loving some unholy people. But it gets better. God not only shows up. But he shows up with a promise yeah yeah you see can I tell you whenever God shows up 
it's always because a promise has been fulfilled or he's got a promise to fulfill Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. God, God, God shows up either because the promise is already fulfilled or he's got a promise to fulfill so in our passage he comes with a promise and this verse 15 is the first of all biblical promises are you hearing me there are over 8810 promises and this is the first of them. And every single other promise falls out of the basket of this promise. The promise that God is going to create and provide the lamb that's slain before the foundation of the world. Promise that church folks may abandon you. Friends may leave you. But God promises to always be with you. Can I preach a little bit more? Uh-huh, thank you. So, so, so here it is. Uh, Wikipedia defines a promise as a declaration that one will do or refrain from doing something specified. Mm. A promise, according to the dictionary, is a legally binding declaration that gives to the person to whom it is made a right to expect the performance of the specified act. Mm. 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 The, the promiser immediately gives right to the promisee that he did not previously possess. Can I throw it at you again? The, the, the promiser immediately gives rights to the promisee that he did not previously possess. Amen. So God in our passage makes a promise in the midst of the curses. He's cursing. He's cursing. That's holy curse. He's not cussing. He's, he's cursing. He, he, he's cursing. He's cursing the woman and he's cursing uh, the man and he's cursing the serpent. And in the midst of his cursing, Richardson, he gives a blessing. Because there's always going to be a blessing, God is saying, in the midst of your trials, in the midst of your difficulty, in the midst, there's always a promise of a blessing Amen. so he gives them the promise of a blessing but here's my problem here's the tension in the text here's the here's the issue I've got all the promises in the Bible are futuristic they are about the not yet why why is God giving me a promise of the not yet while I'm in the now is? Why does God give promises of the future while I'm standing in the present? Why? Why are all the promises of God never about my yesterday? You know, hear me, Jesus. This is good. No promise God ever gives is about yesterday. The promises are never about your past. Because God don't care about your past. God doesn't care about your yesterday. God gives promises for today and tomorrow. Folks around you, folks around you may care about yesterday. They may bring up your yesterdays. They may talk about your yesterdays. You may not forget your yesterdays. But God ain't talking about your yesterday. He gives you a promise for today. Not your mistakes of yesterday. Not your failures of yesterday. The pro Jesus. Let go of yesterday. Let it go. It's holding you back. Let it go. It's anchoring you. Let it go. Mercy. 
But it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Why are, why are the promises incongruous with where I am? You're not hearing me. Why, why, why are the promises not matching up with my situation? Come. Why is God promising me a, 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 a house and, and, and promising me uh, um, um, wealth? Why is he promising me that when I can't even pay my bills? You're not hearing me, man. Why, 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 why is God, why is God promising me healing when I'm experiencing sickness in my body? Why is God promising me something that I'm not experiencing in the now? Is it only given to provide hope? Not hearing me. Come, come. If the purpose of the promise is to provide hope, hope in my situation, hope in my circumstance, that is really a limitation of the promise. Because if all the promise does is cause hope but does not cause change, I'm coming back to it. I'm coming back to it. If all the promise does is provide hope but not change, then it does nothing. You're not hearing me. Yeah. That's true. So the purpose of the promise is not to provide hope. The purpose of the promise of the not yet is to change the now is. Because if the now is doesn't change, the not yet will not come. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. You're not hearing me. Uh, what, what the promise does, the promise of the future reaches back into the present and pulls the present into the future because if the not yet doesn't alter the now is the now is will never become the not yet <sighs> so 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 here it is the promise even though the promise come green even though the promise is about the future it's not for the future you know, let, let, let me try that again even though the promises are about the future, it's really not for the future. It's for the now. All right. You're not feeling me. Come, come. So here's an athlete, see? Here's an athlete. He, he has in mind uh, to run the race and to win the prize. It's the not yet. It's in the future. But the not yet has to reach and the now is. And because the not yet has to reach and the now is, he changes his behavior in the now is. So he doesn't eat any and everything. He starts to run. He starts to take care of his body. Because if he doesn't take care of his body, if he eats french fries and chicken and, and, and doesn't rest well, the not yet will never come. And so the not yet is to change him his behavior in the now is. Uh, are you hearing me? All right, all right. So, so, so you are praying to God for a new home or a house or whatever, and, and, and you're praying to God for that. It's it's the not yet. Uh, but in order for the not yet to become the now is, you got to start saving your. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you waste your money, that not yet will never come. Are you hearing me? All right, all right, all right, all right. So you want that degree, you see? You want that degree, you want, you, and in order to get that degree in the not yet, you gotta study in the now is. You can't party all night and, and expect. Are you hearing me? So the purpose of the not yet is to change my behavior in the now is. But there's a problem there's a problem because the now is is dependent upon my sensory perception Jesus let me let me make this plain um, um, God has has equipped us with senses our eyes our ears touch feel 
God has equipped us with senses. These senses are the information gatherers. These senses bring the information from outside of us into us. That information then gets relayed to the brain, which is the processing center. Are you, are you with me? So the information comes. My eyes see it. My ears hear it. And I even feel it. And it comes to me. You do something. You say something. And the information is gathered. My brain then, in a complex, complicated matter, manner, pre pre processes that information. The brain processor is itself influenced. Uh huh. Uh huh. The brain processor is influenced by culture. The brain processor is influ influenced by background. The brain processor is influenced by my past experiences, things that I went through and did and happened to me. The brain processor. So everything that I experience is processed by a brain that is already itself impacted by. Are you come? Come. So have you ever wondered why some people react the way they do to you react and you want why are you overreacting? Why why are you why are you responding that way? It's because that same information that you saw and received, their brain is processing it differently. Come, come. So when God gives his promise. He's really not giving the promise to the censors. All right. All right. Come. When, when God gives a promise, he's not giving the promise to your eyes. When God gives a promise, he's not giving the promise to your ears. The promises of God is not given to your body. The promises of God is given to your mind. Are you hearing me? Because, because, hear me church, because it's only the mind that is not limited by the geographic or physical environment. Your body, your senses is limited to its location. It's limited to its space and time. But the mind is the only thing that can transcend and escape the fit. So you may be in prison. But in your mind, you're free. All that slave said, he has no shoes on his feet. But in his mind, he says, I've got shoes. All God's children. Now this is a critical piece. This is a critical piece. This, this is for you. You've got to get this. Because God, when he gives his promises, is calling you to, 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 to ignore what your eyes see. Jesus. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When God gives you his promise, he's calling you to ignore what your heart feels and what your body's experiences. You're not hearing me. That's why the promise is to your mind. Not what you're seeing. Not what you're experiencing. Not what you're feeling. The promise is to your mind. Now, now, that's critical. Because what I'm trying to get you to understand is that if you want a change in your situation and a change in your circumstance and a change in what you're going through, you have to change your mental perception. Jesus. So the promise is to your mind. Now watch this. Here's Job, see Pastor Weir. Here's Job. Jo Job, says, Job says, even though I've got worms eating up my flesh, Yet in this very same flesh, Richards, I, I'm going to see God. Do, do, you, do you see it? Do you get it? No, 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 no. H here it is. Job says, I see what's going on in my body. But because of the promise to my mind, I'm going to ignore what's going on in my body. All right, all right, all right. I kind of, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of misled you. 
kind of misled you. And you follow. Don't, don't. You must, you must, you must, you must. The promise is not to cause you. Jesus, this is good. The, the promise of God in your life is not really to cause you to ignore the reality of what you're experiencing. God doesn't want you to deny what you see. Doesn't want you to deny the evil uh, evil sayers. He doesn't want you to deny what you hear. What God wants you to do like Job is to recognize that what you see and what you hear is not permanent, Jesus. Are, are you hearing me? You, you see, that's really what it is. He, he doesn't want you to deny what you see, but recognize that what you see is not permanent. It won't last forever. Yes, there are storms. Yes, there's trials. Yes, there's difficulty. But trouble won't last always. It's not permanent. Your situation is not permanent. Yes, I'm having a hard time in my house. Yes, I'm having trouble with my kids. Yes, I'm having trouble with my husband. Yes, but it's not permanent. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. All right, all right. So the Bible, the Bible says that this is faith. You're not hearing me. Faith says that despite what my eyes see, Despite what my ears hear, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the not yet. The evidence in the now is of what is not yet seen. That's faith. Faith is to your mind. All right. So what I'm trying to say to you is that God wants you to know Elder Campbell, God, God wants you to know that what you're experiencing by faith, you must know that it's not permanent. By faith, you must know that God has a plan, a promise of deliverance, even though you're not delivered yet. <laughs> All right. Let me, let me close out a little bit. Come, come bring that for me. So, so here. God makes promises. He makes promises to my situation. He makes promises to my situation. Can I show you? Thanks. He makes promises to my situation to change my situation. Anything that occupies your mind is a situation. Mm -hmm. Anything that causes you to become worried and concerned is a situation. Anything that causes you to have sleepless nights is a situation. Anything that, whether it be problems in your body, it's a situation. Problems with your finance, it's a situation. And God comes with his promise to let you know that it's time not to seat in your situation, but to stand. Stand. You're ahead and not the tail. Stand. You're above and not beneath. Stand. Your situation is not permanent. Stand. He is your rock. Stand. Stand. Don't keep sitting. The revelation is don't keep seating in your situation. Stand. Stand. Because greater is he that is in you, that is in the world. Stand. Stand. Stop sitting down. Stop seating down. Stop seating and losing sleep and worrying and stop seating. Stand. The 
Lord is my light and my salvation. Stand, who shall I fear? Stand, you're more than a conqueror. Stand, no weapon formed against you. Stand. Donnie McCurkin said, what do you do when you've done all you can and it seems like it's not enough? Stand! Songwriter says, I'm standing under, hey, I'm standing under promises of God. My hope team come my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and I'm gonna stand on Christ the solid rock I stand all other grounds is stand tis so sweet oh Jesus <laughs> it is so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him my God just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know the same the joy, the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery and strife. He promised to keep me never, oh my, my, never ever fall short of his word. I've got to fast and pray. Oh, stand and worship with us. Let's sing this together. Keep my life clean.
my little time and and my, my sermon's done see it is just want to praise you forever hey. and ever and ever says, Lord, you are good, better than good. Is that right? Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can praise you. I owe you.
just given, but for the promises you've kept. We give you honor, praise, and glory today. Like David said, if I had a thousand tongues, I couldn't begin to tell all the things that God has done for me. Not, not just this week, but just today. We thank you for bringing your manservant by Mount Olive today. To bring a message of hope. A message of deliverance. We recognize that there's somebody in this place that's going through something right now. They're going through a challenge. They're going through a circumstance. Some are even walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Could be a bad diagnosis. We don't know. But God, you gave us one more chance. One more chance. You brought us here today. Not out of accident, but for a reason. Because we needed to know that there is still hope. There are still promises that you have made. And in spite of what's going on around us, your promises are yes and amen. It's already done. All we have to do is just claim them, name it, claim it, and walk in God's favor. And God will do that for you. Before we end this service today, the power of the Holy Ghost is in this place, and God has given me the awesome responsibility that may be one person here today that have heard the voice of God and say, you know what? I've decided today to make Jesus my choice. If you're here, we pause for you for this very same, this very moment. Just want you to get out of your seat wherever you are, come down front and say, you know what? I've heard the voice of God speaking to me. And today I've decided that this is a good day. This is the best day to make my stand or take my place in God's army. If you're here by the power of the Holy Ghost, once you step out in the aisle, come down front and say, today I've decided to make Jesus my choice. The church is praying for you. God is waiting on you. You're here. There is no better time than right now. Won't you come and say, Lord, here I am. While you're trying to work it out, God has already figured it out. You can come. If you're here, won't you come? Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, yes, yes. I knew, I knew the Lord had somebody. Oh, praise God. Young man. Amen. Uh, keep praying, church. There's somebody else. I, I feel that there's somebody else. Mm, heads about, eyes are closed. You praying. Let the Holy Ghost do its work. Mm. Oh, if there's someone else, you just want to come out, come today and take your stand for Jesus Christ. You've heard his voice. You hear his call. He's tugging at the, he's tugging at the doorpost of your heart. Won't you come? You're not coming to Pastor Ware, to Dr. Green. You're coming to Jesus. He's the author and finisher of all things. Won't you come to Jesus? Just now. Now I want to change it. There may be someone in your life, in your family, a friend of yours that you've been praying for. And that person needs a miracle, a breakthrough miracle. Uh, you can't get this in the street, but you can only get it in the house of God. Because when you come into the presence of the Almighty God, there is breakthrough. God breaks changes, chains. He turns things around. So if you have something that you, that's on your heart that you've been praying and asking God for, there's someone that you've been praying for, there's something going on in your life or in your family, won't you come? Once you come and stand in their place, they can't stand because they may not be here right now. But you want to stand for them because you've been praying for them. And you know that God is an able God. Not only is he an able God, but he's an on time God. Oh yes, oh yes. You've been praying for people. Let me tell you, God can do what no one else can do. God has a way of reaching everybody. There's no one too far that God can't reach them. 
You've been praying for them. You've been fasting for them. You've been worried about them. You've been asking them, change, come, change, make a change. You've done all you could externally. Now let the Lord work internally. Because God can do it. Yes, yes, yes. Is there someone else you want to come before we close this prayer today? God, we thank you. We thank you for being better than good. Not just good, but better than good. We thank you for being a rock in a weary land. We thank you for being bridge over our troubled waters. We thank you for being a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And we thank you for being that kind of God that's able to reach out and touch us wherever. And we stand here today, many of us are standing for a relative or a friend or an acquaintance. You know who they are. You know what the situations are. And so by the power of the Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood because there's power in the blood. I claim the name of Jesus because there is no other name given whereby men shall be delivered except the name of Jesus. And sometimes we have to plead the blood of Jesus over these folks. So don't fear. Use it. It's a weapon. In the name of Jesus, use it. It's your weapon. It's your power. Thank you for hearing our prayer today, God. Thank you for this assembly. We pray in Jesus' name. Now we're going to walk in victory. Yay. Amen. We're going to clap our hands in victory. Because we victory shall be mine. I don't have to worry. I don't have to doubt. There's no fret. Because victory shall be mine. Amen. 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 have one more song can you stay with about five minutes can you give me another five minutes I'm gonna let you out on time <laughs> if you give me five minutes I'm gonna let you out on time all right amen amen elder why don't you come we have something special elder gent take your spot Okay, church, you know, uh, you're on a high right now, and God has blessed us, wonderful service, but we're here to, we're here to pick up an offering, and I just want to say, uh, when I first joined the team, community service team, it was at a large scale, and I couldn't believe what I saw when I first came here, because they were working, they were working in the, um, in the, uh, the fellowship hall. And we used to get two trucks and they would come in, sometimes three trucks, and they would drop the stuff off. We would unload the trucks. And then after we unload it, the ladies now decide to pack those boxes so we can give them out on Wednesday morning. Uh, usually I stand at the gate and with a counter. And Brother Frank, you know, he's at the gate with me. When I get tired, I need a bathroom break. I get somebody to help me out because it's a lot of people. And I tell you, sometimes we have 200 people. Now, after COVID, during COVID, I remember one Wednesday, I counted 400 cars coming through that door. We had to shut the gate because we have no more food. And you know, I said to myself, God call us to feed the people. I made a lot of good friends at the gate. And, and, and let me say this, uh, you know, we had to pick up an offering. The church lay out quite a bit of funds for this community service. And I don't expect the church to lay out any more money. It's a lot of money. And, um, you know, we can't give everybody a check. We have some folk who work for us, who come and work for us. We have to give them a stipend. We can't pay them. We give them a stipend. Things come up where the truck come and drop stuff off, and then they forget to bring some stuff. They have to go back. You have to give them a tip. Some things have to be done by cash. I'm going to say it. I'm, uh, she didn't tell me what to say. I'm saying what I saw. Sometime Elder Gray and his wife go in their pocket and take their own money out to do some of this. 
Some of us who come to work, we do give us a little, a little something, something, so they can uh, refrain some of this expense. So I'm asking you, um, if you want to do it like once a month, that would be nice for you to put a little something in there for the community service. If this community service shut down, might as well shut the church down because this is what God asked us to do. What do you say? Amen. And we ought to continue to do it. So you know, we ask you to give a liberal offering today. You might not come prepared to do it, but every month if you can give something, please, from the bottom of your heart, just give it. Because it really helps the church. The church has a lot to do as well. And therefore, we need to, um, to help out in this situation. So uh, dig deep in your pocketbook, in your pocket, and just drop something. If you didn't, if you didn't come prepared today, then uh, you can do it next week. But each month, if, if God bless you enough and you want to turn something in for community service, let's do it. Most of the folk who come here and work, you can start picking up. Most of the folk who come here and work, we are seniors. Yes, and we come and work because we don't expect you to come because you have to go to work and all that. And, and it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. What do you say, bro? It's a lot of work. And to unload the truck, and, and I've seen the folk work retired. Amen. And um, it's, it's great work. I enjoy doing it. I did it up in New York. I say it's a small scale. When we do it down here, it's a larger scale. Under the leadership of Pastor Ware. When I first came here, I thought this was done under the Southeastern Conference. But no, no, it's just the church is doing this. And it's such a large scale. And I'm really impressed. So God Amen. bless you as you give. And your support. If sometimes you can slip out of work and just come and see what we do, just come join us. Stop. Park over there. Come and see what we do. It's great work. Yes. Amen. 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 All right. While we are lifting this offering... Right. We're going to sing Because We Care to the tune of Because He Lives. Is that all right? The words will be up on the screen. Praise God. <laughs> because we care, there will be tomorrow. Sing it. Because we care, there will be tomorrow for those, for those who need the love we share. singing and praising today and I've heard I've heard the word you have heard the word now we need to just go out and believe and trust in God and do as he said I might as well sing to everybody's been singing blessed assurance no <laughs> pastor sang dr. green sang Jen sang so I was just following suit let us stand for the benediction Everybody. Praise the Lord. Lord, as we leave your place of worship, we ask that you will shine your countenance upon us. Give us peace in the midst of strife. Send your love for us that it will abide with us continually. And give us the blessings that we so are in need of bless each and every one here and hope that when we leave this place that the word that been spoken and all of the things that were done here today we will 
give you honor and praise and live the life that we need to live in jesus name we do pray and for his sake and the people said amen amen, amen. Sabbath is Pathfinder's Day. So we invite everyone to be here for Pathfinder's Day. And also, there's lunch. That's the given house. So don't leave without getting your, your lunch. All right? Amen. All right, we're going to sing on the way out as you guys get your lunch. Just remember that God woke you up each morning and he started you on your way. So for the rest of our life, we're going to serve him. <laughs>